Hey, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. Frank from Tested. We're here at part three of how to build a Rancor. <laughs> well, how you built the Rancor. How, for we, how we built the Rancor. Built it's a team a effort. Uh, as you can see, today we're talking about the Rancor's head. So past episodes, uh, this is a Rancor built for Comic-Con, uh, sponsored by Modelspace.com. Thank you guys so much. And in past episodes, we showed your designing of the maquette. Uh, we talked to Ben, the fabricator mm -hmm. who worked on the, the foam bodysuit. Yeah, the, the underform. And yep. the underform. And today we're going to talk about the details, uh, yeah. specifically this head, which is the mount on the front of the body suit. Yep. Now, this isn't going to actually mount because this is heavy. Yeah, this is about 300 pounds of clay. Wow. Yeah. Wow, what's the biggest like head you've sculpted? Before? I think this is the biggest thing that I've like sculpted like this. Yeah, head. This and is the biggest thing. This is something that you didn't want to do with foam because you want to get the details. Well, the photos that Phil Tippett had sent had pictures of the ones that they had foam fabricated, and I think that the head was foam fabricated, mm. at least from the pictures I have. Um, these were the these are the ones that I found from in the archives, and it's it's like very low fidelity compared to what Phil's original sculpture was. So I wanted to sculpt based on the photos of his sculpture instead right. of fabbing that the head. Yeah. And you're bringing that to one, oh, maybe not exactly one to one size, but no, human size. Yeah. yeah, people size. People size, costume size. Um, so let's talk about how you actually built this up, because I can't imagine this is just put on top of a, of a, a bust. No, uh, we, I, I went over to Ben's when he was working on the, the body frame, and I took um, like a foam core like kind of mock-up of how big the head should sort of be. Mm. And then I mounted it to this wood and I packed a bunch of foam on it. I used the same foam from when I built that dragon for Capcom last yeah. year. And I put that on there and kind of carved it down and then I coated the whole thing with chicken wire so that when I start putting the clay on there, it has something to grab onto. Okay. Um, so everything, it's just, it's wood, foam, chicken wire, and clay. And I see you actually have like a, a wooden apparatus in the back to hold it stable. Yeah, it's it, it actually goes like halfway down the table and it's counterweighted with another 150 pounds of clay. Oh my God. Just so that it doesn't fall I, over. I, yeah, fall every morning when I come into the shop, I'm like, oh, I hope it's not on the floor. So the chicken wire underneath this thing, I can actually see that. That provides some of that structure. Um, but from there, uh, you're just dumping clay on. Just start packing clay on. Um, I have I have video like the time mm -hmm. lapse of putting all the clay on there, and then uh, and then my pal Adam Bean, who made the little maquette thing, yes. the little eighth scale maquette, um, he came over here and helped me for you know an afternoon, and we just kind of started tooling around on the si on the shapes. Wow. And um, so we get to the end of about four hours of of getting it down, and we're pretty happy with it. And then I stand back and I I think it's a little too big. And so we had to take it down another like 10%. At that point, did you already have details sculpted in? Yeah, we had most of the forms in, oh, yeah. No. It was, What's but, the reduction for that like? Because scale is a hugely important thing, especially if you're adapting this for well, a costume. Like, is it just shaving off at every every angle? Well, you could kind of do that, but we had, we selectively kind of pick, picked and choose where to kind of just bring it in a little bit. And mm. I think we took down about 10%. Um, but I, yeah, the head was a, a bit bigger. All right, so uh, let's talk about this detail. Um, did, were you looking at photo references the entire time to see where, where like the, the eye form, the eyebrow, how far the mouth sticks out? Yeah, well, we have I have really good photos from Phil of his sculpture, mm. um, and they're they're pretty you know nice lit and they have a lot of detail. Comparing those to then like screen grabs out of the film, yeah. it seems like a lot of that detail ended up getting lost. Like oh. whether that was in the foam casting or in the mold or somewhere in there. So I'm kind of sculpting the detail somewhere in between what's in the photos that Phil gave me and what's in screen grabs, which is, it's almost like the, the detail's a little washed out. Mm. Um, but again, at this scale and building something in this amount of time, like this isn't something I'm spending like six months or spending weeks on the sculpture. We're building this whole thing in four weeks. Yeah. So I also have to pick and choose like where I focus my detail. Do I get crazy and make every little wrinkle or do I just put in the broad strokes and the, the, the larger forms? And so I, you know, I get into the wrinkles but I'm not getting into tiny little crevices and I'm, um, you just got to pick and choose your battles when you, you don't have a ton of time. And what do you think for the Rancor gives it its most personality? Where do you need that detail? It's, you know, it's, 
it's not in the detail, I don't think. I think that it's in the the silhouette and the broad strokes of the forms. Like the it's it's almost like a trapezoidal nature of the of the head and then getting the silhouette just right and, and, and putting the teeth in the right place, like is the mouth too wide or too narrow or too blocky? It's kind of a big oval, mm. you know, where the nose is in comparison to the eyes and how, like we must have moved the eyes forward and back five times. It, it's just finessing these like little movements and stuff to just find the character. I mean, this is kind of sculpting a likeness. And though it's not going to be like perfect to any one or other photo, it's you're going to look at it, you're going to go, oh, that's the Rancor. Right. And then what are you using for the eyes right now? Uh, these are just urethane eye forms, just uh, kind of like when I did Zoidberg or when I did anything else like that, just to have a little plastic piece in there to give the, uh, the right curve. So you have a bit more sculpting to mm -hmm. go on this guy. Uh, when we were done, we alluded to earlier, you're not gonna mount this 300 pound clay sculpt yeah. on the costume. What's the process of making this a mask for well, the costume? Gotta make a mold of it. Um, this is about, this is a little less than two days worth of sculpting right now. Um, I have probably about a half a day left to just kind of tighten up some of the details. Um, and then we're gonna put a big shim right down the middle and, and mold it both halves, and we're gonna do both halves at the same time. And shim, shimming is when you put real thin metal stock in there mm. and do both sides of the mold, and then when that shim comes out, it's you know it's really, really thin, it's like paper thin, so the mold will still close up just fine. Right, right, and um, that's when it seems, so it's two molds, one for one for left side, one for right side. Correct. Not symmetrical, um, and then, uh, the sculpting tools, you told me you were using, because it's such a big form, you're not using your dental tools for this. I've been using like a popsicle stick most of the time. Really? Yeah, just it's tons of popsicle sticks? Yeah, just a gr break it in half and just kind of pushing stuff around. I have a couple of loop tools. Um, with stuff like this, I use large loop tools. Mm -hmm. There's not very much, like the smallest tool I have is this one. Yeah. Um, a lot of little wet brush, chip brushes. And then even for texture, like most of this like bumpy little skin texture, it's just a towel. Huh. Like as I as I sculpt, I just press the towel into it, and that's what most of this texture is. Wow, because I remember when you were talking about, for example, the Zoidberg project, to give it texture, you use those little finger, yeah, uh, the little, like little gloves, gloves little, yeah. right, that, that people use in offices yep. to, to page turn. Yeah. Um, you're, you were using that, but you can't do that one index finger for the entire Rancor, so it's I could, texture. but I mean, and, and on top of that is because the way we're gonna do the skin on the Rancor, it's mm. gonna be that really thin sheet foam, um, and just fold it into the wrinkles and stuff, it's got to transition into that. Right. So if I make this like a hyper detailed sculpture and then the rest of the body is kind of not, yeah. then it's not going to look right. So I have to, it's got to kind of transition into that. And this will be foam latex? No, this is going to be latex and polyfoam. So oh. once I have this mold open, we're going to spray latex in there, let it dry, and then back it with a thin layer of polyfoam. Mm -hmm. um, and then probably press some L200 into it or put figure out how to... So it doesn't need to stretch? No. It's going it's to be lightweight, it's going to have the same fidelity that you get from this sculpture, yep. retain all of that, and then it's also going to be material that you can actually paint on as well. Yes. And, and bring out details. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, I have an interesting question, and it's something we're going to solve today, hopefully, and how are you going to see through this? And we've come up with some interesting things. Yep. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the technical details that we're not going to fit into the spank core. Sure. See you in a second. All right, Frank, uh, so here comes the technical challenge. Uh, once this is done, your head is not actually going to be looking through the mouth, looking through the nose, or looking through the eyes of this mask. It's going to be recessed back. That's part of the magic yeah, of this costume. It's about two feet back. Right. So we wanted to find a way that you could basically puppet this from the inside. Because as Ben was saying last episode, he thinks of this, and you gotta think of this as a puppet. You're yeah. a puppeteer. You're moving the arms, you're moving the head with your head, but you need to be able to walk around, because Comic-Con. Uh, so I have an interesting solution. Uh, you're telling me that people, when you work in stop motion animation, puppets, puppeteers you know, mm -hmm. use goggles, like use those uh, basically home cinema goggles, yeah. right? Things like that Sony sells, or they, 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 you, you can basically watch a DVD on an airplane. Yeah. Uh, but that made me think of, these guys, which are what the uh, these goggles, uh, fat sharks. And Those are for the FPV. That's right. Quadcopter racing yes. and stuff. Right. So uh, in the world of FPV quadcopter racing, the racers wear, for example, these are fat shark attitudes, um, and then use a security camera mm -hmm. and get low latency video. And it turns out that these goggles have a direct line in. 
and this camera Perfect. has a line out. So this is a really simple setup where you have a cable here, and you can hold this, and that's well over two feet. Mm -hmm. RCA cable, yeah. that's a, a good enough color camera, yeah. you know, auto just, uh, just exposure. And then these goggles, that's a Luminaire camera, mm -hmm. and these goggles, also provided by Luminaire, uh, have a resolution of 640 by 480. Uh, which is, it's good, it's not HD. There are HD ones, we could test those out as well. But with a direct line connection, no latency. Easy. No latency. Uh, now, of course, uh, because it is some kind of telepresence, you need to make sure that the low latency, also you have the right field of view. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we swapped out we have the lens on this to give it a wider lens, and I believe these have a pretty wide field of view uh, compared to like the teleporter glasses I've been using mm -hmm. for racing, FPV racing. I want to try putting this in, and you think this will work? Yeah, I mean, I, we would, I don't know, maybe put it in the nose or somewhere in the mouth. I, I just, we just got to find a spot and right. get it in there. In the yeah. mouth, and I think, you know, looping that and then mounting this, because Ben was talking about for the head movement, mm -hmm. you're going to have maybe like a, a welding mass type rig. Yeah, it's the, just the part that goes on the top of your exactly. head. Exactly. So as you move your head, that's going to move the whole yeah. Rancor head. And it needs to be that one-to-one -one movement. So mm. you can wear your goggles, and as long as your, your, these goggles and are the head to my are head. locked, yeah. then it should be seamless. More or less, yeah. Huh? In theory. In theory. It's going to be a fun problem solving. We're going to test this out, and the batteries should last plenty of time for a walk at Comic-Con. Uh, what's the next step? Um, well, i got to finish sculpting this a little bit, and then we'll probably make the mold tomorrow. Make the mold, and then the final job will be the painting. Yeah. The painting and putting that skin oh, on yeah. that Rancor suit. So stay tuned. we got one more episode. We're going to show you how Frank's going to be painting this and how you and Ben are going to be putting the skin on the Rancor, and this is amazing. Like You've done this in basically a month ahead of Comic-Con. A lot of work. Well, this is only about a week and a half. And this is only a week and a half Between of, of Ben's sculpting. suit and this. And you've been collaborating with a lot of people. Yeah, so. uh, I've had Ben. Ben has had some help over in, in his garage. Um, I've had Regina also helping me. Regina works in my shop all the time, and she worked on the teeth last night. So it's, it's a big collaborative process, and it's great to be able to just have all your friends around. Yeah, so if you want to build your own costume, make sure you have a lot of friends to help you sculpt. Exactly. Otherwise, you'll be breaking a lot of popsicle sticks <laughs> on your hand. Uh, come back next time. We'll be showing you the final paint job, final application, and that walk at Comic-Con. Thanks a lot. See you next time.